Hi there. Carrot. Stick. Stick. Carrot. Well, the carrot and stick approach are certainly a motivational theory that have been around quite some time. The whole idea of taking a carrot to incense someone to, uh, you know, do something and give them a little reward, that's certainly very understandable. And then the whole idea of maybe having a stick to potentially push or prod someone to do something that you think that they should be doing or maybe they aren't doing correctly and they need to uh, change their course of action. Those are both plausible things. The carrot and the stick approach have been around quite some time. And I'd say they're okay, but I think we've learned a little bit more in some of our other classes. In fact, I think that that class that we had uh, for uh, human resources where we studied McSelland, uh, I think he, uh, that they actually had some very good ideas with regard to motivation in the areas of achievement, affiliation, and for uh, power. And uh, Side note, please excuse those props I used. I'm down in Des Moines on grandmother duty and I don't have everything I want to have. But let's move forward. Let's talk about motivational theories. So McSellan, achievement, what does that mean? For someone who joins a company or is part of a company and is motivated by achievement, that means that they want to um, set goals and accomplish things, get a lot done, um, they are really your go-getters and just getting those, you know, reaching higher and getting those things done is what really motivates them day in and day out. For those folks who are motivated by collaboration, well, they want to join a team or be part of a company in order to hang out with the other people that are there. Maybe they have some shared passion, skills, uh, a certain interest in technology or a cause like a, at a nonprofit, whatever the case. Those folks want to hang out with others and make things happen together. They're the ones wearing these team t-shirts like this. Together, everyone achieves more. It's all good. The last group are the those who are motivated by power. And certainly, uh, we've all seen some of those folks. In fact, at different points in my life, I've been motivated by power. Uh, a power-motivated person is looking for opportunities to lead others, to potentially control the purse strings, to control what's happening. They might be the founder of the company or a leader of a department. Um, but whatever the case, they're all trying to get something done and uh, influence what happens. And so they're the ones who, we had this little mountain here, uh, they're the ones right here, and they're the ones leading the charge, climbing that mountain, trying to go to do new things, great things, and they're saying, hey, let's go this direction and follow me. And those are all the folks following them down there. So, as McSelland says, we are all a mix of all these different motivating factors. Some more than others and some at different points in our lives. Uh, as I said, I've been around a while, so I've had various uh, ones of those uh, motivate me differently at different points in time. But the key is for the hiring manager uh, to understand what are those motivating factors for their staff and specifically the individual employees because you want to put them in the right roles and you want to give them the right responsibilities and create the right environment for them. Um, at a higher level or at a group level, I think it, there are probably some prevailing uh, factors which motivate a group uh, of people. And again, understanding those uh, is very important for the leader or manager of the team. Together with the Human Resources Department, the leaders of an organization can look at those motivation, motivational factors and they can shape the culture of the company. That can be in the areas of benefits, manager to employee ratios, could be team structure, uh, could be roles and responsibilities, do they adopt agile methodology, it, whole variety of things. And so it's really important to take motivation into consideration as you build your culture and then continue to cultivate it over time. You know, when you think about uh, someone who is affiliation oriented, uh, you know, they want to work with others and hang out with others and, you know, obviously get things done, of course. But, you know, if you were to turn around and put them in a managerial position, uh, that might be stressful for them. They might not want to be managing their friends. So that's an important thing for a manager to consider. For those who are achievement motivated, uh, they're going to need to keep having that drive, a new thing to do, a new project, a new service, a new 
department. And that's kind of how I tended to be in my life. I'm always looking for something new. I want to go do it and get it accomplished, but then I want to move on to the next thing. And it's just important to keep those people motivated by introducing new ideas and new projects uh, to them. And of course, for those who are power motivated, it's important to continue to give them opportunities to lead others, to manage and control things, lead projects, uh, take on more financial responsibility for the company or whatever it might be. Also giving them the training so they can be a good manager is important, we know. So at the end of the day, with any company, when it comes to motivating, I still feel that it's very important to always recognize your staff and let them know how important they are to the past success, the current success, and the future success of the company. You need to be saying thank you to them on a regular basis uh, for just ordinary things as well as when they go above and beyond. Uh, people who are engaged and motivated will do great things for you and I'm living proof of that. I've had many great people that have worked for me over time and I think a key part of working with of leading them was providing motion. Uh, mo motion, oh my, motivation. I think I'm done. All right, have a good day.